Hey friends, my name is Jose Oconda. I'm an interactive designer and Webflow developer at Whiteboard, a creative agency. And this last week I was able to attend Webflow conference and for the first time ever I got to meet some of the people who actually watch these videos in person. And it was so motivating uh, to hear some of your stories and it really inspired me to start creating these videos again. So I don't know if I'll keep it up, <laughs> but I wanted to take some of that momentum and at least create one short tutorial video. So that's what we're gonna do. We're looking at this um, auto tabs component and doing this with a kind of like horizontal progress bar is fairly easy to figure out, but doing it with the circle progress indicator, uh, that's what I'm calling it at least, is a bit more complex. And so I thought that would make for a fun tutorial. So let's dig into that. And by the way, I'm using Refocus's automatic tabs booster uh, for the kind of like auto playing tabs here. And it works great. You click on this and the um, timers start all over again. It keeps going through and it works perfectly with the interactions in Webflow itself. All right, so with that out of the way, let's jump into Webflow and actually get started. All right, so I've deleted all of our demo items just so that we can start building from scratch and cleaned up the classes so that we can do everything together. Uh, I'm not gonna go into how the TAPS component itself is built, but just as a quick overview, I'll mention that we're using Flexbox. I've set the TAPS content to expand. I've set the tabs menu to do not shrink with uh, some padding and some width attributes. And then we've got the circle tab links, or I, sh I should say the tab links that come automatically with the uh, Webflow tabs component. And then we've got the tabs link inner, just a simple div block uh, that I'm starting to build everything inside of. All right, so with that out of the way, let's actually get started on the circle progress indicator. And we'll just call this circle progress wrap. I'm going to set this to do not shrink since it's inside of a flex box and I want the width and height to be declared here. I'm going to use three rems uh, for both of those. All right and that should be uh, sufficient for what we need. So inside of here we're going to add a, a corner piece <laughs> is what I call it. So we'll call it circle progress corner and we're going to pin it absolutely to the top left. And we're also going to give it a width and height of 50%. Uh, now the width and height are not correct. And that's because uh, if you look here, it's actually getting its um, positioning relative to the body. And we actually want it to be relative to the progress wrap. So to do that, we'll set the position to relative of progress wrap. And now our corner is uh, perfectly positioned in the top left of the wrap. Inside of here, we're gonna add a div block and we'll call this circle progress line. And this is gonna be the actual line that animates uh, with our Webflow animation. We want the uh, width and height to be 200%. And essentially what that means is that it's gonna be the exact dimension of the wrap on the outside. Uh, let's give this two pixel border and we're gonna start with a um, light gray, so something like 88 brightness value. Uh, let's copy that. Um, and we'll use a radius of 50%. And you can see now where kind of like the inactive state is gonna look like. Uh, and then finally, we're gonna take two of the corners and turn them into black. So the top here and the left. Okay, so now that that's done, uh, I'm going to set this to overflow hidden. And the last thing I want to do is use Flexbox because when we start creating the other four corners, we're going to use Flexbox to position the circles in the correct place. Uh, so we're just going to pin it to the top and the left. And you can see that it's trying to constrain itself to fit inside of the parent. We don't want it to do that. So we'll set progress line to do not shrink. All right, so that is one corner done. Now, all we have to do, and this is going to be a bit tedious, is do the other three corners. I'll do the next one um, in the recording here and then speed through the other two. But we're going to give a combo class to this corner called top right. And we're going to pin it to the top right and then use Flexbox to bring the circle over to the right as well. You can probably guess at what I'm trying to do here. With this progress line, we're going to give us a combo class of one. 
Uh, you would think I would call the other one one, but this is actually going to be the first one that animates since we're kind of used to clocks starting in the center and then going clockwise. Uh, we want this one to be the first one that animates. Uh, so all we have to do now is tweak the colors for the borders so that it makes a little bit more sense. So we're going to keep the top black, uh, but we want the right to be black and we want the left to be our gray. Okay, and then I'm gonna do the same thing with the other two. I'm just gonna add two more corners and turn the correct um, sides black or gray, depending on what they should be. All right, so we're back. I've got it, uh, I've added in all of our corners. Uh, the last thing we wanna do is, we're gonna be animating these circle progress lines. And if I animated this one, it would affect all four in their respective corners. We don't want that, so we'll definitely add a combo class of four to this one, since it's the last one that's gonna be animated. And then we can grab our circle progress wrap here and add it to all of the tab link inners and just make sure that it's in the correct position. All right, so now that is in the correct, uh, that's correctly set up, I should say. And all that's left for us to do is add our animation. So we're going to use the Webflow native tab change animation. Let's create a new one and we'll call this tab link on. And this is going to be a bit tedious, but what we need to do is grab all of our progress lines and change the rotate values. Uh, so one by one, I'm just going to go ahead and grab these. So bear with me as I do this. Okay, and just one more. Awesome, so if I go through each of these, you'll see four, three, two, and I'm looking right here, one. And the starting values for these are all gonna be the exact same, negative 136 degrees. Uh, don't ask me why, <laughs> uh, but that is just uh, the magic number that I found where the black is totally um, eliminated. And then one by one, we're gonna bring these in. So let's go new rotate and the finish value needs to be negative 45. And that's the perfect number uh, to actually rotate the black line into view. Bear with me one more time as I add in these last ones. And rotate negative 45. So if we preview this, um, that looks like it's working well, except that I forgot to set these to the initial state so that they don't animate in. All right, and now that's working perfectly. So let's save this and uh, we're gonna set the trigger settings to the class so that all of our tab links are gonna have that same animation when the tab pane comes into view or out of view. And speaking of, <laughs> we need to set the animation for the out of view. So we're gonna duplicate tab link on, change its name to off. We can actually delete these ones since we don't need those values, but we do need to remove set as initial state. And let's go ahead and set the duration to zero seconds so that it happens instantaneously. So if we've done this correctly, um, all of our tab links are going to animate um, beautifully. The last thing that we need to worry about is timing. And to do that, I wanna reference the refocus library really quickly. Um, so just to go through these steps super fast, I've already added the script tab uh, inside of my page settings. Um, if it'll let me go into there, there we go. <laughs> and here is the script tag. And then you can see uh, in the documentation that it wants us to add the uh, custom attribute to the tab links menu. Um, so if I come into my tabs menu, go to the settings, you can see that I've added uh, the name and the value here. And the value is the number of seconds that it will take to loop between the various tab links. So here, it's gonna take six seconds. So we want to update our animation to match that. So I'm gonna to go to the animation for the tab link. And all I wanna do is set the timing for these to match our six seconds. You can see that it's only taking two seconds. But if I switch this to 1.5, 
it's going to finish at six seconds exactly. All right, and I think that should be enough to um, go ahead and close us out. Let's let that publish real quick, and then we'll preview the animation on the live site. Refresh. And if we did this correctly, the circle progress indicator will move all the way to the beginning and the next one will start perfectly. And like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, if you click on a tab link, it'll restart the animation and go through fully before looping back to the next one so that the refocus booster and our custom animation inside of Webflow are working perfectly. Like I said at the beginning, I had such a good time meeting so many of you at Wellflow Conference. You really inspired me, and this is my small way of saying thank you, and I'm so glad to be a part of this community. I will catch you guys in the next one, if there is one. <laughs> See y'all later.